My name is Lucy Byrne, I'm the Managing Director of Dot Art, and I would like to welcome you all here to this virtual prize giving ceremony for the Dot Art Schools Programme 2021. Thank you so much for joining us. When we held our first virtual event this time last year, I'm sure none of us expected to have to have a second one. However, we are really delighted to be able to hold an exhibition of the winning young artist's work this year, even if we cannot launch it in person as we would normally do. We'll tell you a bit, a bit more about that later. We know that the last 15 months have been very tough for everyone, and in particular for children and young people. We are absolutely delighted that so many of you have been able to remain creative during this period, and so many schools have seen the benefit of continuing to take part in our programme, despite the myriad pressures on you and your time. Thank you. I'd also like to welcome our panellists, Carolyn Murray, Dot Art School's project manager, who most of you know, Susan M. Coles, our guest judge, Victoria Merriman of Arts Council England, and Dr. Helen O'Keefe from Edgehill University. The first thing to say is that this event is being recorded. However, we cannot hear or see you. It is only our panelists who have their videos and microphones activated. I'm sure by now that many of you are very familiar with Zoom, so fingers crossed this all goes smoothly. Please feel free to use the Q&A box you'll see at the bottom of your screen to share any comments or feedback or ask questions to the panellists throughout the event. We will answer as many of these as we can at the end. If you are a teacher watching with your class or year group, please let us know this. Say hi in the chat or the Q&A so we can see how many people we have watching overall. Teachers, I'd also really like to encourage you to submit your artwork to our Teachers' Corner exhibition. This is a celebration of creativity, which was extended to all those working in education across the country during the COVID-19 pandemic. We wanted to demonstrate to students that teachers are artists too, as well as highlight the importance of staying creative during difficult times. The response last year was fantastic with over 40 teachers submitting an amazing array of artworks, many created while in lockdown. This year, you have until the 2nd of August to submit and the exhibition will open online in September. Just go to the news page of the Dot Art Schools website to find out more. So, for those of you who may not be entirely clear on what's going on here, Dot Art Schools is an annual online inter-school art competition for year five and nine, culminating in an exhibition. This is the ninth year of the programme, and I'm delighted to say that we have again broken our record, with over 90 schools from across the Liverpool City region taking part. Over 1,000 works were submitted online, and in March, our expert shortlisting panel picked the top three works per school, which you saw while you were waiting for us to start, and you'll be able to view again at the end. A public vote then took place throughout April to select the top piece from each school, which has been included in our exhibition. So, what happens now? In a minute, I'll be handing over to Helen from our partners from Edgehill University, and Vicky from our funders Arts Council England to say a few words. We will then hand over to Susan Coles to introduce herself, give some context on the importance of a creative education and announce the overall winners and runners up. We will then find out more about our very exciting exhibition and have a sneak video preview. And finally, we will take questions and feedback and do some important thank yous. So first, I would like to hand over to Helen O'Keefe who will speak to you after this short video.
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our beautiful Edgehill University campus today. I'm Helen O'Keefe, and I'm the Associate Dean in the Faculty of Education here at Edgehill University. We're very proud and honoured to be part of the team sponsoring the Dot Art School competition this year. This has been a year like no other, and it's been an absolute privilege to work with Lucy and Carolyn and the team to support the successful running of the award this year in very challenging circumstances. The talent I have seen displayed in every piece of artwork submitted has been breathtaking. And the care and thought that has gone into this work is really clear to see. You should all be so proud of what you have achieved, just getting to this point. Today, we are speaking to you all from the television studios here at Edgehill Campus. This is one of many ways we support and develop creativity for all our students. Many go on after working in, in these studios to work in film, in media or in television. Others study courses which lead them to be dancers, actors, musicians, writers or designers. We are committed to developing the skills and talents of everyone who comes to study at Edge Hill. And I can see that each of you have the potential to go on and achieve amazing things given the creativity in your artworks on display at the Port of Liverpool building. Art allows us to examine what it means to be human and to bring people and ideas together. It helps us to express ourselves, connect with others and to understand the world around us. Making and looking at art has long-term effects like boosting our brain function and our immune systems, as well as contributing positively to our mental and emotional health. Art helps us to express our feelings and to work through our experiences. And each one of your artworks submitted to this competition have done this in their own unique way and will be lasting reminders, both physically and online, of the important role of arts and culture in the most difficult of years for everyone. We wish you all very good luck today and we thank you for your enthusiasm and your commitment to the awards. Thanks, Lucy. Thank you so much, Helen. That's uh, really lovely words. Uh, so now we're going to hand over to Vicky Merriman from Arts Council England. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me here today. Um, I am actually here in person as well, but this is being pre-recorded for technical purposes, so I am going to get to enjoy the event as well. Um, it's a great opportunity for me to actually come along and speak directly to um, young people, schools, families, um, so thanks for that opportunity. And I am just going to talk very quickly a little bit about Arts Council, what we do, and then we can get on to the really exciting stuff. So um, a little bit about us. Arts Council England is the National Development Agency for Arts and Culture in England. And this, this slide here de describes a little bit about what we do. So fundamental to the way we work is partnership and collaboration, working with other organisations and individuals to support arts and culture to thrive across our country. And I'm particularly pleased to join you again here for the second time to celebrate the fantastic schools project that has become embedded into the cultural offer here in Merseyside. So we invest, we support artists and organisations in their development and we invest public money from the government and from the National Lottery into arts and culture. And we're delighted to have funded this Dot Art Schools project through our National Lottery Project Grants programme. And it really highlights how lottery funding can reach lots of young people. Uh, and the other thing we do is shout very loudly about the value of arts and culture in people's lives. And my job is to shout loudly about the value of arts and culture in young people's lives. So in early 2020, we set out our 10 year strategy or vision called Let's Create. And then COVID hit and the world changed. And for most creative practitioners and organisations and for us Arts Council, the focus of the last year has been naturally on survival. And yet the value of creativity and culture in people's lives during that time has never been more evident. During the last year, the arts and cultural sector has worked responsively to meet an immediate need for young people. 
In particular, it's been amazing to see the number of projects and organisations that were able to mobilise digitally and so quickly to ensure that young people were able to continue being creative in their homes. And last year's Dot Art Schools Virtual Gallery was a tremendous example of how young people's artwork could be enjoyed at home in a really high quality way. And now, as we move beyond the immediate crisis, our focus at Arts Council moves into resetting and refocusing. So by 2030, we want England to be a country in which the creativity of each of us is valued and given the chance to flourish and where every one of us has access to a remarkable range of high quality cultural experiences. And underneath this, it's a very detailed plan with outcomes and investment principles with which we will work. We believe that our Let's Create vision is more relevant and important than ever in the wake of the pandemic. In developing this strategy stroke vision, we consulted with thousands of people across the country to get their views on what culture and creativity meant for them. And in particular, we heard from children and young people what they wanted from the Arts Council over the next 10 years. And this has straight shaped our strategy and our plans. So we've embedded our ambitions for children and young people right throughout the whole Let's Create strategy. The best evidence we've got shows that not all children and young people participate and progress their talents equally. And that's the headline focus for Let's Create. In our consultation with the young people and young creatives, they told us that they are very creative and they just don't always benefit from the public investment in arts and culture. They told us how important it is to have role models that look and sound like they do. And their families and carers also need to see and hear familiar role models. They told us that they want more opportunities to showcase their own creative work. They told us how important it is to be creative in school as well as out of school. And they talked to us about the big themes that are important to them, such as the climate emergency and Black Lives Matter. A sustained recovery for the cultural sector is one where it reaches more people and it nurtures talent wherever it's found and finds inspiration from every quarter. So we've also published four new equality objectives which set out how we will work towards this and how we will put our legal duty into action over the next three years. The Durham Commission makes a series of recommendations which we've committed to respond to about how schools can work more innovatively and creatively. The first of these is the launch of the Creativity Collaboratives Fund. We're also pleased to have reviewed our successful Arts Mark programme in consultation with young people, and this will continue to be a feature of Arts Council's work with schools. So we invest in arts and culture for a lasting return, and we're looking for organisations, artists, events, initiatives, and others to apply for our funding and help us to achieve our strategy, Let's Create. So if you've got a great idea for a project and you want to apply to us, there's a very comprehensive suite of guidance documents on our website that is aimed at first time applicants. So if this is you, why not drop in and see for yourself? So that gives you a little bit of an overview of the Arts Council's thinking as we navigate our future. Thank you again to Dot Art for inviting me here. I can't wait to see and hear the awards and to see the brilliant work that you've all been doing. And don't forget, get in touch if you want to. Thank you. Hello, I'm Carolyn Murray, and I just want to say thank you to Vicky for that interesting overview of the Arts Council and its crucial role in supporting the arts. If you've got any questions for Vicky, can you please put them in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen for us to address the panel later. So now I'm delighted to introduce our guest judge, Susan M. Coles. Susan has been our guest judge annually since 2014 and has the enjoyable but also challenging task of selecting the overall winners and runners-up from all the schools. Susan is totally absorbed in the world of art, craft and design education. As an artist, a teacher, an advisor and a critical friend, and as the past president and various other roles for the National Society for Education in Art and Design. Nationally and beyond, Susan. she is a campaigner, 
um, and advocate for the subject. She strongly believes that every child has an entitlement to a high quality visual education, visual arts education, sorry, and does all that she can to remind people of that. So we're going to go over to Susan now. She's actually based in the Northeast, so she's recorded us a short film to introduce her decision making process and art. Over to you, Susan. Hello to all of you from me. I think if I describe myself, first of all, I'm Susan, Susan Calls. I'm the judge of Dot Art in 2021, as I have been in previous years. And I always describe myself as someone who works in art education. But the most important thing is I am actually an artist and I love art. I mean, it's there at the centre of human history. People made marks on stones and walls. And we now know that they actually go back 70,000 years how astonishing is that? And yet we still, still want to leave our mark, whether it's a drawing or something in a piece of clay or a photograph that we've taken, something woven, stitched, sewn, shaped, molded, cut, made, made with our hands and usually with our eyes and our hearts and our minds. I'm thanking all of you all of you that have taken part in this competition from all the different schools and I am really thanking your teachers who despite the masks and the PPE and the sanitizing who despite the bubbles and in many many cases you haven't even had access to art spaces or proper art equipment I thank those teachers for giving you some space to think and to make and to enjoy as you create and to use your hands, because that sense of touch is one of our haptic senses. It's probably our most important haptic sense. And haptic communication, well, that's a branch of nonverbal communication. And that's about the ways in which people and animals communicate and interact via the sense of touch. And touch is the most sophisticated and intimate of the five senses. It comes from the ancient Greek word, Hapticos. It's really important for communication in our lives. It's vital for survival. And one of the very first things that babies do is they reach out to touch. So we're coming out of lockdown three. And what was lockdown three? It was PlayStation. It was drawing. It was jigsaws. It was Netflix. It was Lego. It was knitting, painting. It was joy from the arts. We watched films, movies, TV series, cartoons. We played games outside. We played games inside. Do you know that the value of the games industry in this country went up over £7 billion during lockdown? And yet a few weeks ago, the Secretary of State for Education suggested that the government funding for higher education courses and creative subjects might be cut for up to 50%. He actually even referred to them as low level courses. Do you know what? That's absolute nonsense. Just look around you. Everything in your environment started its life as a sketch, as a drawing, as a diagram, and then went through the whole process of being made. So somebody using that hand again, picking up, that pencil or using that mouse on a computer drew and designed something that is part of your life. So the creative and cultural industries are essential in the world that we live in, a world of innovation and moving forward and artificial intelligence. So young people and parents and carers and teachers and school leaders Please make sure that you continue to champion the arts and that you look at the Dot Art exhibition, not just the winners, but all of the work as a showcase of what is human individuality and expression. I'd like to thank these young artists for all of their hard work because you really, really do rock. And I would also like to thank 
you for your patience in listening to me and we are going to enjoy looking at the winners. So now we come to my role as a judge and obviously I have selected some winners from the winners selected from each school. It's not an easy job to do by the way, it's a really, really high standard and an incredibly diverse and wide range of media, imagery and just responses. So I would start by saying that um, if I have criteria, and I do have criteria, it's about creativity, it's about um, future potential, it's about communication, expression, and, and a piece of work that, that, that has a meaning to it. So these are my choices. I'm going to give you the year five winner and the two runners up, and I'm going to give you the year nine winner and the two runners up from that. Our first runner up today is from Blackmoor Park Junior School. This piece of art is called The Mystical Gallery, created by Hannah Jeffrey. Acrylic, this time on canvas, and a very interesting piece of work inside our world on a, I presume, winter's night with that incredible sky and that burst of colour again. So the outside world, the galaxy of another world being viewed from our world. So the inside and the outside, a limited but incredibly effective use of colour and a picture that has an atmosphere. Our runner-up, number two, is from Pinehurst Primary School. And this is called Space City by Xavier Edgington Lynch, who has used wood and spray paint to create this really interesting contrast between the kind of solid state of a modern city cut from wood and a fantasy background of looking out into that other world, but a really clever use of colour and layers and stencils and moving about. And then in the top right hand corner, the brightest planet, which could be the moon. I find it a really powerful and engaging piece of artwork. So the year five winner, 2021, is from Bridgemere Church of England Primary School. It's called Dandelion Seed Burst. It's by Jack Kent. It's acrylics and mixed media. And look at that explosion, a burst of color, a sense of movement and energy, nature reclaiming its place and very symbolic, I think, of our own recovery from COVID-19. It's a celebration of regrowth. Well done, Jack. Okay, welcome everybody to this very, very special celebration assembly at our school, Bridgemere C of E Primary School. As you know, I'm Mrs Middleton, I'm the head teacher here at Bridgemere Primary School, and this is uh, Mrs Smart, who is our art specialist, who comes to work with all of the classes in our school, so we are very, very lucky. We want to have this celebration assembly today because of a very special reason. Because I know that our year fives have been very, very busy with Mrs. Smart entering the Dot Art competition. So I'm going to hand over to Mrs. Smart, who's going to tell us all about what Year five have been doing in their dot art competition. 
Well, this year we've been very excited to enter the Dot Art competition here at Bridgemere. It's the first year that we've entered. We're only a tiny school, we've only got nine pupils in our year five. And every pupil managed to produce a really lovely piece of work this year. So we have a little bit of a sample here of some of their children's work. Um, we worked in acrylics and we had a lot of fun producing our artwork. And the children and myself, we've been watching eagerly for the voting and to see who's got our first, second and third. So we're at that point, aren't we, where we know who our highest winner is, mm -hmm. Mrs. Middleton. That's right. And the voting took place and our highest voter for our school was Jack, wasn't it? And Jack knows that, don't you, Jack? So come up to the front, Jack, because he had the highest votes for our school. So his picture, here is his, here is his picture, um, got the highest votes. But... Something more exciting has happened, hasn't it, Mr. Smart? Yes, that's right, because every first winner from each primary school gets in, goes into a big pot of all the schools. And then the judges vote an overall winner out of all of the primary schools. Hand over to you, Mrs. Murphy. And Jack, we are so pleased to announce that you are the overall primary winner of all of the schools that entered. Can you believe that? It is absolutely fantastic. You should be extremely proud of yourself. Look at your face, absolutely amazing. We are so proud Very of you. Nice. Let's give him a really big clap. And then it's going to the Port Isaac building um, and all the firsts from the primary schools, all of their work, and, and the high schools that enter as well, all their work will be displayed there. And I've just read an email to say that we will then have an opportunity to go and actually see that work, hopefully with your family. And us, hopefully. Yeah. So that will be really, really lovely and exciting to see your work at a proper grown-up exhibition in a proper frame. So how exciting is that? Proper artist now, Jack. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Do you know, Jack, we are so proud because you have won from all of the schools and your artwork, they absolutely amazed the judges. So it would be lovely to hear what actually they say about your artwork. There will be a prize giving as well. You will get a special prize so when we take you up to the art gallery, you'll be getting a special prize as well. And we will be obviously putting your photograph, hopefully in the paper, and on our website. So, well done, Jack. Give everybody a big smile, and let's give them another big clap. And our runner-up in year nine, our first runner-up. Is from Childwall Sports and Science Academy. <laughs> Iftiaz Alam, a photograph called Reflection. Almost a moment in time, which photographs are, where the person walking on an autumn night or a winter night has stopped. The fantastically colourful sky is reflected in the water. There's a sense of time and place, thoughtfulness, really nice composition there, all within a square. Just fantastic piece of photography. We have our second runner-up from Liverpool College. 
Mythical Creatures is by Nia Plange. Again, a strong piece of work. It's a pen drawing. So you can see that there is black pen on there, but there appears to be a, a wash, a tonal wash. And the more you look at this mythical creature, the more you realize that it isn't something real, but something dreamlike, fantasy-like, an illustration from a futuristic kind of fairy story and very elegant use of lines all converging together to make this really, really intriguing image. And our winner, overall winner, from year nine. Is from Chesterfield High School. And just look at that picture. It's called the Forvis Dog Close-Up. Forvism, by the way, is a movement in art where very, very bright colours are used in contrast to each other. It's by Alexander White. It's oil pastels, 59.4 centimetres by 42 centimetres, which is big. Great sense of symmetry, great use of colour. If you look closely there, there's been a lot of um, really good textural marks achieved and blending of colours from light to dark and tonal. And this dog has got personality. In fact, you could call this a really, really joyful piece of work. Wonderful. So that brings us to the end of the judging. Congratulations to everybody whose artwork I have shared and congratulations to you and your schools for being winners and for taking part in 2021 Dot Art Schools. Thank you very much. here live from Chesterfield High School. We just want to say congratulations to Alexander, who's sat next to me. Uh, we've got a bit of a cup and a prize for him. Uh -huh. I know he's very embarrassed. Congratulations. <laughs> One of our most talented members of our art team in Year 9, but this, he's surrounded by fellow artists in Year 9. We've absolutely enjoyed every moment of being part of this competition. Uh, and it's been a really exciting opportunity for children. I know Alexander's literally uh, <laughs> <laughs> with the embarrassment. But I know his parents were going to be very excited and we are so excited that hopefully very soon we'll be able to come and visit the exhibition with all these lovely people here. Uh, can I just thank all the organisers for today? I know Alexander would love to say a few words, but he's going to hold back. <laughs> uh, and uh, congratulations <coughs> to all the year fives. Uh, looking at their artwork has inspired us as much as uh, the work that we've been doing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Well, wasn't that exciting? Yeah. It's great to be able to see students' reactions when we can't all be together in the same room, even if it's slightly embarrassing for the students involved. I'm sorry to put you under that pressure, but we're well done to all the shortlisted young artists and massive congratulations to the overall winners, Jack and Alexander, and the runners-up from, from all the schools. So thanks and well done to Bridgemere Primary School, Blackmore Park, Pinehurst Primary, Chesterfield High School, Chilwall Sports and Science Academy, and Liverpool College. Well done. So the overall winner of the Year 9 entries, which we've just been seeing, um, received a scholarship to Dot Art, giving them a year's free membership to Dot Arts Network, allowing them to show and sell their work al online alongside professional artists. The winners, up, winners and runners-up in both age groups will receive special art-themed prizes, including art books and art materials, to encourage you to keep making art. Teachers, we're not leaving you out. The two winning schools will also receive a £100 gift voucher to spend on art materials kindly donated by Cass Art. The student certificates and any prizes will be posted to your school this term if we don't get them in person. 
So don't worry, we'll get them to you. So with that, all that excitement over, now I'm going to hand over to Lucy to tell you about the Dot Art Schools exhibition. Hello again. So after much uncertainty and of course the cancellation of last year's exhibition, we were absolutely delighted to be able to finally confirm that the ninth annual Dot Art Schools exhibition would be going ahead. We are very grateful to CBRE for allowing us to use the iconic Port of Liverpool building on Liverpool waterfront as our venue. If you've never seen inside this incredible building before, you're in for a real treat. The exhibition opens to the public tomorrow, Friday the 11th of June, and will be open until Friday the 25th of June, 12 till 6 p.m. every day except Sunday. Please do pop down and spread the word. Everyone is welcome and no booking is required, although we do, of course, ask that you wear a mask and respect social distancing. There is no substitute for seeing our young artists' amazing work in the flesh. But for now, here is a sneak preview. Wasn't that lovely to see? Um, brilliant, right now. So we are now onto our Q&A section. So if you have any questions you'd like to ask uh, any of the panel, or if you just have any comments or um, nice things to say, then please do uh, put those into one of the chat boxes. Um, I'll read out some of the lovely comments we've had so far. Um, from Matthew Pateman at Edge Hill. We are thrilled to host this fabulous event and have been inspired by the quality of work you produced. He says, I was one of the judges in an earlier round and utterly loved it, which is lovely. Um, we've got um, Kirsty at Makebank and Sign Studio Design Studio Tom Pigeon. She was also one of the early judges and loved all the work. She says, "Well done all." Uh, we have a, um, a lovely message here from Sandra Penketh, who is the director of art galleries at National Museums Liverpool. She says, "Huge congratulations to all of you. You're amazing, talented young people. Your work is amazing. Be proud." Um, well, who else have we got here? Um, we have Tony Heaton, uh, one of our uh, panellists, who's a, a very talented sculptor. He says, congratulations, Jack. Look forward to seeing more of your work in the future. Um, who else have we got here? Is anyone actually asking us any questions yet? I don't know. Um, so... Who else have we got? So yeah, um, that is uh, some of the comments, but I will just, um, some of the people who have been, uh, some of the schools here so, who are watching and enjoying it. We've got Abbots Lee, we've got Chesterfield High, we've got St. Mary's Catholic Primary School, we've got Rice Lane, King's Leadership, Hungerford, Bridgewater High, Bishops Martin, Runnymede St. Edwards, Monkstown Primary, Notty Ash, Hillside Primary, Roby Park, Norwood Primary in Southport, Shoreside, St. Mary's, St. Margaret, St. Chad's, Holy Family, uh, Sutton Academy, King David's, Chilwall, St. Anthony of Padua. Basically, there's lots and lots of you watching, which is just absolutely wonderful. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, I don't think we've got any actual questions. Um, so and you've got one last chance to ask us any questions or put any more shout outs. Um, but I think that's uh, that's going to be all of our questions and answers. So I'm going to hand back to Carolyn. Thanks, Lucy. So now it's time for us to say some thank yous. 
Drucklock Schools is particularly grateful to our wonderful key partner, Edgehill University, and, and in particular the Faculty of Education, for their invaluable support this year. To the Arts Council of Lilling for their funding support, and Service Graphics, who are our print partner. Our prize donors, Cass Art, the Make Bank, and we had an anonymous donor, which obviously we can't tell you their name, <laughs> but they know if they're watching, and Dot Art. Well, our Dot Art Schools champions who support individual schools to enable them to take part, who include Jan McDermott, um, the accountants, Jill Wilson and family, Moorcroft solicitors, Go3 partners, Maggie Mullen architect, Playmaker, CBRE, Park Ward, Seacombe Ward, Walton Ward, Greenbank Ward, Utree, Norwood and Old Swan Wards, whose local councillors also supported through the mayoral fund for the sum of the districts. Our wonderful shortlisting panel, we couldn't have done it without them either, including Amber Akanu, an artist and filmmaker, Emma Bush, who's the head of programmes at Curious Minds, Kirsty Thomas, who's a designer and founder of Tom Pigeon Design Studio and also of Makebank, yeah. and Professor Matthew Pateman, who we mentioned earlier, the head of Department of Creative Arts here at Edge Hill, Sandra Penketh, the Executive Director of Galleries and Collections Care and Venue Heads and Curatorial Teams at National Museums Liverpool. And last but not least, Tony Heaton at OBE, Sculptor and the Chair of Shape Arts. And our very wonderful guest overall judge, Susan M. Coles. We're really grateful to them for their input and help with the whole programme. We also want to thank uh, Kirsten Little and Emma Galt of Make CIC for helping with our exhibition, in particular the walls, the wheelie walls that we used in the building, and Andrew Willoughby, Ian Edwards and Dan, uh, Stan Yarker of CBRE for hosting our exhibition at the iconic Port Liverpool building. I'm also particularly grateful to our dedicated volunteers, in particular Lottie for her help preparing for this event, and Hajar for supporting the installation of the exhibition with our technician Faith, plus our team of exhibition invigilators who are going to swing into action from Friday, Jack, Molly, Chloe, Leona, Laura, Anya, Emma, Erin and Maisie. And then special thanks go to Neil and Jude and the rest of the team at Edge Hill and for their brilliant help behind the scenes, putting together the technical aspects of today's event. And we also must thank the 90 schools and over a thousand students who took part this year. We literally couldn't do it without you. Please keep flying the flag for art. So, and finally, as we come to the end of our event, before we finish, we really hope you enjoyed viewing the shortlisted primary entries at the beginning of the event. And now we're going to show you the secondary shortlisted works. In case you missed the beginning, we're also going to show the primary ones at the end as well, after the secondary. So you're welcome to stay and watch those two slideshows back to back, which will last around 10 minutes. Also, please remember to complete the online feedback form if you could. We really need your feedback. It helps us improve what we do every year. Hopefully the link will be in the chat at the bottom. Thank you so much for coming and sharing this special day with us. It's been wonderful. And we hope to see you all at the exhibition very soon. Goodbye.